manicure, pedicure, vijazzle the lot all at once. Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. We are back down at the Cattle Crush again today. Seems like we spend a lot of time down there at the minute, but we are trying to get prepped up, ready for carving. We've got to get some boluses in. We've got to get some management tags put into some heifers. We're only about a month away now, I would say. It might even be three weeks if we have a couple of early heifers carving. So trying to get that stuff all sorted is quite important. Want to get the tails trimmed, get the brands all clipped out, you know, get them all prepped up. Daz in here, he's just writing out the management tags. You can see, it's getting them all done to go into the heifers, into the first timers, which are all in calf to stabilizer. When we do the tags, I'll just nick one, so I can show you. We write, obviously 20 is the year that they were born, and then 30 is just the number. So we know when we look at them, if they're 19, they were born in 2019. If they're 20, they were born 2020. So it just makes management a lot easier. This half of the tag is the EID, which we don't use too much at the minute, but we need to use more of. And if we do change to a different program, on our recording, then we probably will use them. We used to use them with the Shearwell program years ago, and then we went away from it. Yeah, we really do go back to it. It cuts out a lot of error, because when you're doing everything and you're having to type in the ear tag, you think sometimes like sixes are eights, eights are sixes, ones are sevens. You can make some messes. You don't make messes when you scan it and it's done. We're gonna bolus them with the high iodine bolus. Got these from Pasture Tech. They're the Agrimin, all trace, uh, high iodine bolus. Iodine is important because It'll make your calves have better vigor. Your cows will start and cycle faster. Um, they better clostrum. So really important to get some of those. They get in the, whatever it is, Animex Super Worm and Fluke as well. They're having a full MOT. It's like they're having like a manicure, pedicure, vijazzle the lot all at once. Uh -huh. If you are wondering, yes, that is the one that I repaired. Still going strong. If you're wondering about these boluses that we're using, we're using the Agrimin high iodine boluses and they are this big. They come in a pack of 20, but it just does 10 cows. You put two in every single one and they last for about eight months. So they're really good. I like to put them in now because it means that they go all the way through carving. It works for the calves. It does all the things that they should do there as improving the vigor, etc., of your calves. Helps them get back into calf. It'll be in all the way through grazing. I really like it. They're an awesome bit of kit. I've spent a lot of time in the past looking at different mineral boluses and some people will say theirs is superior to the agrimin one but what they really mean is it's got a bit more iodine in and everything else isn't as good 
The Agrimin one is really good. It's proper on a level all the way across. Everything the cow needs is in there. So I'm really impressed with them. We've used them for years. They're just really good. And if you're wondering how we trim the cow's tails, just a normal pair of kitchen scissors. Get ones with thick blades, but never really found anything better than that. We've tried dagging shears. We've tried a few other different bits and pieces. They're just never as good. Those kitchen scissors are brilliant. Pre-carving as well. I'm planning on getting rid of that bench and putting in a nice sort of like workbench all here so that it is really organized so we can have all our tags on it. We've got plenty of room because there just seems to be stuff everywhere and it drives me mad. So we're gonna have a nice little session there. Don't know where it's gonna be, but soon we're gonna sort that out. If you're wondering why we trim the tails as well, I've mentioned it before, but I'll mention it again. We do it to keep the udders clean. So I've just come into the stabilizers here. You can see his tail here. I got his tail up, but it's shorter. And the udder, obviously, it's going to be down here when it starts to come into milk after it's calved. And if you have dirty udders and a calf comes and suckles, what you'll get is you can get disease transmission from the cow to the calf. Now, one of the main ones for that is Yoni's disease, which is some people call it Jones's, some people call it John's, whatever. We call it Yoni's. And it's really bad and it will stay in your herd and spread like wildfire and it's one of the worst diseases to have in cows we don't have it in our herd luckily we've eradicated it years ago but it's just good practice one of those things that we just continue to do because we just think it's better for the cows better for the animals to make sure that everything is clean and having their ears trimmed as well look how easy it is to see these we tried trimming them before we never got on very well they always used to go a bit mad but we've trimmed them all this year and it's so easy to see their ear tags now so i'm actually really looking forward to being able to carve them and just re read because i can read all them all the way back there at the ring feeder from here so should be really easy for us not long now either oh really excited can't wait i'm gonna have a bit of a shuffle round as well before carving so i've got these some cool cows here in this yard they'll be gone pretty soon i'm going to take the stabilizers and bring them into here because i want to have them close to the cattle crush so that i can weigh the calves easy enough and then just shove them back in the yard for all my data that i want for the stabilizers this group that's down the gangway now these guys have got the heifers in them and i want to split this up because it's quite a big group i want to take the heifers out of here and put them in probably that yard the other side of that wall because it's an easy yard to get cows out of because they're the most likely to have issues although fingers crossed they won't all in calf to a stabilizer should make calving really easy so come on they're not bagging up yet so i think we're still a fair way off so yeah i'll split this yard out then i can just have some cows in here some cows in the bottom stabilizers there heifers out the back and then it should make life a lot easier and it keeps all the cows and the calving all in one little area or we can get everything to the crush really easy if we need to and to the maternity wards so fingers crossed it all works to plan this year. I'm really looking forward to it. As well, the weather's picked up a bit, hasn't it? And it's gorgeous outside, which means we could soon start and get a few cows out to graze, which would be very nice. I'm gonna start and give these girls all a little bit of cereal now, just in that few weeks leading up to carving, just to make sure that they've got plenty of energy in their diet. Because they've just been on straw and silage and they've done real well, kept condition well, but I think that little bit of energy could just help them out when it comes to carving. Also, something that I'm doing is I'm supposed to be going on an AI course um, because I'm thinking about using AI to bring in new genetics into the stabilizers to breed replacements so that I don't end up having bulls that I can't use because they will already be bred to my cows. So if anyone has ever done an AI course, let me know if there's anything I need to read up on beforehand. And also I'd like to know if anyone uses any heat detection tags or collars, boluses, any of the things that go on the tails, tail paint, what do you think's good, what's bad? I need to know really, because I'm trying to be organized this year. I want to make sure that we've got things in place before I need it. So when it comes to inseminating, I've got it all sorted out. So any advice, I'd really appreciate it. Also, something else to come and have a look at. Look at this, I'm all cleaned up. It didn't actually rain. If you watched my last week's video, I had some old sheds in here and I was knocking them up and I said, oh, I'll do it on a wet day. It's not rained, I just got around to doing it. But now this is all cleared up, ready for putting up the hurdles there for the carving pens along here, which I will do pretty sharpish. It's something I want to do. I've got a load of other bits and pieces going on and I'll explain all that in another video because it's very video worthy. I'm hoping that during carving, I can get a few extra videos out. I know we'll be busy, but I'm, there'll be a lot going on. So I think it'd be quite interesting. I'll keep my regular video and then if I can stick a few extras in there, I will do. Anyway, until next time, guys, have a great weekend. Enjoy it because I think the weather's going to be lovely. See you in a bit. Ta-da!